So thank you everyone for coming today. I know it's a hectic time of the year for many of us. Uh, going back to school is always a challenge for any educator in the room. Uh, but I'm here to talk to you about some really important stuff and that stuff being DEI and STEM. And we're gonna dive into, of course, what DEI is and of course, how it is connected to STEM and why it's important to engage these topics uh, within your communities. So I'm gonna just start by sharing my screen with everyone here today. Now, what we're looking at here, of course, is Neuromaker STEM, DEI and STEM, the future of innovation. And my name is Joshua Varela, uh, and it's a pleasure to meet with everyone here today. And when we're gonna be talking about, first and foremost, before we even get into uh, the, the conversation, let's just a quick background on Neuromaker, who we are, what do we do, and why are we here today? So incubated out of the Harvard Eye Lab, uh, we're very proud of that. Uh, and from there, of course, we're considered one of the top 10 brain machine interface companies in the world through our sister companies and brands. And of course, we've been featured on uh, publications such as the MIT Media Lab and NASA Technology Exchange programs. And one of our proudest achievements as an organization has been ISTE's most innovative, innovative EdTech Startup Award. Uh, and just a bit about your host. Uh, my name is Joshua Varela. I'm the Associate Director of Strategic Partnerships for Neuromaker. Uh, and, and, and the thing about DEI, before we even get in there, you know, these are conversations that are a bit uncomfortable for some, but that's okay. Uncom uncomfortable is we grow. Uh, and I wanna give you a bit of my story just so we are all aware of what the landscape is. So uh, I'm a proud son of two diasporas. My father came from Puerto Rico in the late 70s. Uh, and my mother, uh, being an Ashkenazi, Jew, came uh, to New York. Uh, in fact, her family came back in from in the 1890s. Uh, but the beauty of this is, I've been I was educated in the New York City public education system from kindergarten to 12th grade. And a bit about my story, you know, technology and access go hand in hand. And one of the youngest memories I have is when I went to summer camp for the very first time in middle school. And when my parents, when they were tasked to get bring get a computer for me for this, they didn't know anything about technology. So being financially not always in the best situation, coming from a lower economic status, uh, they picked the cheapest option. And when I arrived at my summer program, I recall everyone had Wi-Fi and I was tethered to my desk. And in that moment, I felt isolated. I felt nervous. I felt afraid. But this is what educators can do. My middle school teacher who nominated me for the summer program, Mr. Calisanto, called me and said, hey, you're meant to be here. This is who you are. You're a leader. And with that power and with that strength my, my teacher gave me on that day, uh, it led me down a path of leadership and advocacy. Uh, my life was always been about advocating for tech access. This comes from my work when I was a, a student panelist on the panel for educational policy for the for New York City Department of Education, to my work as an equal opportunity student at the University of Buffalo, uh, where I was a TA and mentor to many other EOP students similar to myself. My experience has always been within technology and the intersectionality that tech has within our society. Uh, and throughout that time and experience, I've been privileged to not only lead some really impactful, meaningful STEM access programs and workshops with my work at San Francisco College of America, uh, but also within my current role uh, at Neuromaker, working with our partners in school districts across the Eastern United States. And before we move forward, I have to, of course, acknowledge privilege. I'm privileged in the sense that I'm a white hetero male. This is something that is very important to recognize uh, because there are many others out there who aren't given a seat at the table simply because of their, their sex, their gender, their identities. And, and that's something I just wanna put uh, on the, uh, the very front of this. So our agenda for today is what is DEI, the STEM dilemma, the STEM uh, and opportunity gap, access and engagements programs, and of course, a call to action. So let's talk about what is DEI. Uh, DEI is, of course, an acronym which is for diversity, equity, and inclusion. Uh, this is something that is super important to talk about because we are challenging systemic issues that are 
pretty much plaguing the educational system. And diversity is super important to talk about. We all come from rich backgrounds of, of, shared, of shared narratives, but also different narratives. So we, of course, need to create different models that can show and, and, and be inclusive of what we're trying to bring and how we all have a piece of what we're trying to talk about and convey when, when talking about how organizations are represented, how communities are organized. Uh, equity, you know, it's about bringing, having a seat at the table. Uh, there are systemic systems that are in place that do not equally distribute power. And in doing so, people are not less recognized and not given the opportunity to be a part of decision-making. And this is something that has ripple effects within our whole society. Inclusion, you know, when that voice is coming to the table, it's about bringing new idea, new narrative, new perspectives of different communities, different individuals by understanding the, the complete picture of what is taking place uh, within our community and, our, and, and a shared narrative and at the same time, different narratives that are essential to creating a more uh, equity-based institution and society. So for those, you know, equity versus equality, uh, let's just take a look at this graphic really quickly. Uh, <laughs> for a fair selection, everyone has to take the same exam. Please climb that tree. Uh, you know, when we talk about uh, being equal, Yes, this is the same test. Yes, this uh, was designed for everyone to take it, but that same test, uh, as you can see, the only one who really has a clear advantage is, is the monkey. Uh, the fish is probably not gonna get anywhere in this race and the penguin, uh, they, they're not really the best at climates. But this, this is a pretty much just to let you know, there is a clear difference between equal and equitable. And what we really need to understand is that some of the models, some of the institutions, some of the frameworks that are in place uh, by choice to control power disenfranchise people along the way and communities along the way. So this is just one image of how this topic is so important and how we really as a society within our schools and within our leadership positions need to think about this question every single day within our work. So this now connects to our DEI responsibility. DEI is as a shared responsibility. We, as leaders within our community, leaders within our schools, we have to have the ability and the capacity to recognize uh, when something is not being done within an equitable way um, and access as an intentionality to removing barriers. So we really have to ask ourselves, are there certain barriers that are put in place? Uh, you know, for example, when I was in New York City Public School, they had the, the test schools. And as many of you educators know, standardized testing statistically is not fair to POC communities. Uh, there's the question of access to testing resources and test prep. And along the way, additionally, there's this question of the test design itself. So simultaneously, we have to educate ourselves. We have to keep doing the work. Uh, the work is not just done outside of the classroom. It is a part of everyday life. It is a part of how we view uh, the laws, the rules that govern us around us. So it is a responsibility of leaders within our community to question and at the same time ask and be a voice where others who may not have this voice uh, to advocate. You know, we have to be advocates for populations who aren't being representative, who have barriers intentionally put in front of them. And we need to be intentional in what our ask is of our communities and ask of other leaders and decision makers on how to change uh, this narrative that is taking place in districts across the country. But let's connect it to NeuroMaker. Let's connect to why I'm here today. Why am I talking about this with everyone here today? There is an industry dilemma. As I said earlier within this discussion, uh, NeuroMaker has sister companies, and these sister companies have been faced with uh, a challenge that many other companies are faced with, which is a talent pool. You see, 
just based off of these statistics, STEM industries and careers have remained mostly white and male dominated. And this lack of talent that we're seeing in these pipelines has impacted our own hiring in many other companies around the country. When we want to create a more diverse and inclusive environment in our office, uh, it becomes very difficult to do so because these pipelines uh, into diverse communities haven't been created. And along the way, it also extremely impacts uh, minority communities and also women in STEM. So this underrepresentation is also a, a huge connection to the pay gap that is being experienced across this country. Uh, for every dollar a white male counterpart makes compared to a Latino uh, identifying woman, there's usually close to a 70 cents gap in that. And the only way we're really gonna solve this dilemma that we experience within professional industry is to push back and ask our educators, ask our leaders and partners within this space, what can we do here to improve this representation? Uh, additionally, we have to look at what happens when students are going out of K-12 and then into higher ed. Uh, within higher ed, we have a serious drop-off of, of Latinx and uh, Black students declaring their majors within STEM and STEM studies. And this comes down to what did STEM look like and what did that preparation to STEM for higher ed look like within the K-12 space? And this dilemma is not only happening uh, now, it's been a part of the social fabric for a long time. However, STEM is growing, STEM is expanding. You know, we're, we're seeing by 2029, there's going to be an 8.8% .8 in the job growth within STEM. And, and here's where it gets very, very important to understand the wage, the medium wage of STEM uh, occupations in 2020 was $89,780. So these are not only jobs that are growing, expanding, uh, but these are high paying jobs that are in high demand. Uh, another you know, concerning statistic that we've seen out there, two out of three women say they were not encouraged to pursue a career in STEM. This is something that we as an organization has always asked ourselves, how do you improve this access? How do you improve awareness? How do you remove the barriers of the perception that STEM is not a place for women? So along the way, these statistics still improve. Uh, black workers make up 11 percent of the US workforce, but they only represent 9% of the STEM workforce. And as of 2019, just 27% of the STEM workforce is compromised with women in STEM. So these, these numbers are painting a very clear picture. The market is growing, the jobs are high paying, the jobs are at the same time though, not being able to be inclusive and diverse because the talent pools that industry is looking for have not been populated. And this then connects to why we're, what we're living in now, what we're a part of, uh, the learning loss. The learning loss, as everyone knows, uh, COVID-19 expanded the already existing learning loss that is taking place throughout uh, the country. And the biggest impact of that learning loss has been impacted felt on POC or people of color students. Now, these communities that were already impacted before COVID, it's, it's gone and expanded dramatically. And I know educators there it wasn't an easy time to adjust to that switch, that, that dramatic switch which took place due to the COVID pandemic and which is still ongoing. But here are some of the statistics that we've seen so far of, you know, black and Hispanic students are twice as likely as white students to have no live access to a teacher. So we are seeing a question of access keep occurring. We're seeing a question of increased absenteeism and loss in engagement. And this increase in absenteeism, as many people know, is a clear connection to that lost engagement. And with that lost engagement, 
we lose the participation, we lose the interest, we lose the excitement, we lose the potential for the future to what's to come for those students. And this is something that was said by the US Department of Education. These disparities can be a cause for great concern, especially when they interfere with students' opportunity to learn, grow, and contribute to our nation's future. So we in industry and also in our work in Neuromaker have seen this is gonna have ripple effects for generations to come. Uh, the ripple effects of this are gonna impact innovation, they're gonna impact creativity, critical thinking, uh, the creation and expansion of new job markets, uh, which will also be connected to our own nation, the national question of what this nation's future will look like. So if we aren't proactive in what we're doing to change this in the classroom, the ripple effects of this learning loss this widening gap that we are all seeing day to day could truly change how the United States is functioning within the global economy. And I know that's something big to take on here, but uh, within our communities, within our work, we're seeing this. We're seeing help wanted signs everywhere. We're seeing uh, people, you know, not going into the careers and jobs that they wanted to. We're seeing at the same time that loss, that loss of spark and interest, which is what all students need, and particularly students who come from uh, a POC uh, background at this time. It is, it is a call to action for all of us to really ask ourselves, what is this doing to our communities? And at the same time, what is it doing for the future of this country? So what, what can we do? I, I just painted a very gloomy picture and I don't want to leave in, on that note or, or even stop on that note. This, this, we need to be positive, we need to be proactive, and we need to ask ourselves, what can we do? But I want to tell you what we do. I want to tell you how Neuromaker wants to help you in this journey of access and in this journey of engagement. We want to empower our educators. And how we empower our educators, we want to empower you by giving you the skills you need to bring new, innovative, emerging topics into your classroom. And not only into your classroom, but into a wide variety of courses and a wide variety of programs. And we're gonna talk about that because that's all about expanding access. STEM is everywhere. It's a part of everyday life. It's a part of the future of where we're gonna go as a nation. But we really need to ask ourselves, what does expanding access look like? Why? Do we have STEM only within certain high schools or certain middle schools? Or why are these programs only being offered in after school? Why are these programs not a part of the core curriculum, the core curriculum? And then at the end of the day, let's increase engagement. Neuromaker, we, we love to say when we're working with our partners, this is some of the most engaging experiences we've been able to provide through our technology is seeing the light of, of spark in the eyes of the students and the educator alike. We wanna help our districts not only increase this engagement and empowerment for their educators and their students, but we wanna see it increase the engagement of the community. What Neuromaker would love to do with its partners is, is really come to question and say, at the end of the day, it's about reigniting and reengaging that spark. And through that engagement, we see students return to the classroom. We see educators want to be there, get that B12 shot they need to really take uh, these topics of emerging technology within the biotech, within artificial intelligence, within CAD design, engineer design, and apply it to their classrooms and at the same time, apply it to the needs space of the community, of their industry partners, of the jobs, of the community colleges, of the four-year colleges. So how do we do this? How do we, how do we do it? We talk about programs. We talk about the programs that we create. We talk about the programs that we leverage. So as you know, uh, STEM looks very different in every building. STEM uh, is a beautiful buzzword, but we gotta get past buzzwords and then to practicality. 
And practicality looks like creating equitable access and creating equitable access by looking at your existing programs that you have in place, ensuring that they're not just a part of an after school, ensuring that they're not only a part of the select few schools or select few programs, but really asking what does the democratization of STEM look like? And how can these programs that are already existing within the programs that are offered, how can we widen those programs? How can we expand that? And the beauty of what we do here at Neuromaker and our approach is, is really to talk to our districts and say, we know this isn't gonna be an overnight success. We realize this. This is gonna take time, this is gonna take effort, and this is going to take uh, engagement of, of, of our leaders and engagement of our community. So we love to roadmap with our leaders in the district the future of what STEM could mean for every student at the district. And that is going and asking yourself, it is never too late to engage in STEM. One of the, the proudest uh, partners that we have is a transfer high school in the South Bronx. And for those who may who have not worked with a transfer high school, this is where the system has kind of said, we can't really do much anymore here. This is their last shot. They're gonna age out of the system. They're going to either fail and that's it. But the beauty of technology, young and old, when you experience it in your hands, when you see it work, when you see its potential, that's a shared experience. That is something that we have been able to do with our programs, the Neuromaker Homes and the Neuromaker GCI. We've been able to see with our programs a wide variety of courses, a wide variety of, of programs that are already existing within our district partners, uh, taking our curriculum, taking our hardware, taking our amazing concepts and ideas from industry and then bringing it into multiple grades, multiple courses, and then really asking, having that hard conversation. Because DEI is a very hard conversation. And like I said at the beginning, where we have to challenge our leaders and say, hey, you know, this school statistically, predominantly POC students, predominantly lower social economic, what are we doing here for STEM? What are we doing here for digital literacy? And the, the question always comes down to urgency. So what is the urgency to change? And I always like to, when I'm working with my partner, saying the urgency is now. We cannot allow for these problems, which have already existed uh, within, our, within our society to keep going, keep moving forward. We need to, as a collective, help and empower as advocates for communities who have been uh, denied access by granting them access and providing feedback, providing a seat at the table to learn about what the community wanted. One of our really amazing partners called Building Audacity, they're a charter school. Uh, in, in Lynn, Massachusetts. And Lynn, Massachusetts is a super diverse uh, city within Massachusetts, predominantly Latino or Latinx. And they did a survey with their, with their community, with their teachers and, said, and with their students and with the parents and said, what do you want in terms of programs uh, for your children? What are you looking for? STEM came up, biotechnology, robotics came up time and time and time and time again. The parents, as any parent would, wants their child to be successful, wants them to succeed. And as we've discussed so far, technology is the future of a large multitude of careers and the future of where our, our country is headed. And these parents stood together and voiced this concern and said, hey, we want our children to experience we want them to have digital literacy. We want them to have transferable skills that are connected to career and industry. We want hands-on 
learning. And this is the call that NeuroMaker answers when we work with our partners. And it is never too late. Just because these programs were not offered in the elementary doesn't mean they cannot be offered within the secondary. Just because STEM programs haven't been well established at the high school doesn't mean we can't do something. Because if we all carry that same way of thought and that same way of thinking, the cycle will remain the same. And we have to ask ourselves, how do you break the cycle of socialization? And how do you uplift and how do you provide these tools, these opportunities to our students? And I wanna tell you how we do it. Our four pillars to support your DEI mission. So when NeuroMaker was even thinking about going into the classroom, we said we have to talk to educators. We really need to understand what is going on out there. Uh, and our four pillars came to curriculum, hardware, computer science, and our competition. When schools have to take on curriculum, it's extremely costly uh, to have these multi-year curriculum plans within STEM. Uh, and when we saw some of our competitors in the space, what they were charging per building, to be honest, it kind of churned my stomach a bit. Because if it's a question of high quality curriculum not being afforded or, or given to a school due to the simple cost of it, that denies access. And we cannot deny the tools that educators and students need to be successful within STEM from the very beginning. That's starting off already by taking the floor right from under us, right? And the beauty of our curriculum when we made our curriculum for our program, we said, we do not want to pigeonhole this curriculum. We want this curriculum to be expansive. We want it to be interdisciplinary. We want it to be able to go where STEM is not, and at the same time, go where STEM is shining. So the curriculum, how we designed it and put it forward, we said we need to be able to address multiple classrooms, multiple grades, and STEM learners at all levels. And that STEM learner at all level is not the student, but also the educator alike. We, when designing this curriculum, we understood the challenges that is being faced in the classroom. And that number one challenge is, is time. So we wanted to give back some time for our educators to ask themselves, where can this curriculum go where we have not thought of it before? Where can this be moved where it has not been moved before? Because that will increase access and that will increase the ability for our students to learn about STEM concepts. And the STEM concepts that we cover are connected to the trends that are taking place right now within the, the industry itself. Artificial intelligence, a topic that has not really touched many classrooms, is a part of everyday life. And of course, we're going to have a really great webinar to discuss AI, the power of AI. Robotics, robotics is, is within our industry. We are living in the age of automation. And if we don't teach these emerging concepts within an equitable way, we are going to, we are going to keep denying access to the table, keep denying access to the job market, and keep denying the ability for, for our colleagues who come from black and brown underrepresented communities, the ability for intergenerational wealth and intergenerational growth. Our hardware, we as an organization said to ourselves, we need to connect what students are doing to what is happening in industry and the hardware has to do this as well. Now, there are some really amazing products out there that are engaging, teach students some great concepts. But to be frank, many of them are toys that have been rebundled and, and given to schools and say, hey, good luck. That, that, that's not the case of what we have to do. We're trying to address a gap and we need to address that gap by increase the, the pretty much we need to increase the 
the difficulty of what we're giving to our students, the rigor of what we're giving to our students. If we give our students toys, it's, it's still going to be play, and play is important, but we need to connect the rigor of what we're doing in a way in which is building the student up, is giving them these building blocks so they can create their own identity. They can gain their own career awareness. And career awareness is, is so important. It is so important because to be seen, to be heard within the STEM space for many of students is something that they will never have that opportunity. And we at Neuromaker as a group, as a collective say that needs to stop. And we ask our leaders and districts to also question that as well. Computer science, digital literacy is, is the language of the 21st century. You need to have some basic knowledge of coding, some knowledge of computer science to be a part of this workforce. Uh, just to give you some insight on this, my, my background in education is liberal arts. I had to learn uh, my tech skills along the way through practicum. And practicum is the best way to learn for many of us. And if we don't provide computer science access to our, our students and allow them to learn from block to C++ to Python and build those skills, we are denying them the voice of the 21st century. Really. So where there aren't computer science programs, we give educators the tools, skills, and resources to do this. And we want to see, no matter how advanced or how new students and educators are to computer science, they will leave with digital literacy and competency to go on and go into the workforce. And then competition. The Neuromaker Creative Challenge, we as an organization assessed what was going on within STEM competitions, robotic competitions, and, and to be honest, the cost. The cost is immense uh, for many of schools, many of districts to organize, to mobilize. And whenever there is a roadblock of cost put in front, it creates the haves and the have nots. And we as an organization asked ourselves, well, why is there a cost? So with the Neuromaker Creative Challenge, there is no travel. Travel is another burden that we've seen districts go through to organize. And especially during the COVID pandemic, which is still ongoing, travel is extremely difficult or in some instances in some states not happen. And with that competition, we provide career awareness. Career awareness, like I said earlier, is vital. If students don't understand the reasons why they're learning, what they're learning about, and the, the pipelines that are being created, then what is the purpose? Students need to understand, hey, if you learn this, if you innovate here and you're creative, there is a world of potential and opportunity in front of you. And we, and when I say we, I mean leaders of schools and, and, and the Neuromaker team alike, we want to see the future of innovation. And to see the future of innovation, we have to inspire our students. And we do this through our four pillars. And I realize, you know, not every school is looking for curriculum. Not every school is looking for hardware. Not every school is looking for computer science. And not every school is looking for new competition. However, we want to talk about what you can do now. What is your immediate need? What is your immediate need when to improve DEI in the district? And then how does that immediate need turn into long-term road mapping and planning where we take democratization of STEM and we make it expansive and we provide our students with these experiences uh, and at the same time develop our educators through our professional development. And cost. <laughs> cost is super important to talk about here. You know, there are a lot of great options out there for districts and cost is a barrier. Like I said earlier, each one of these, if we took it one by one, is in the tens of thousands of dollars for some schools, depending on how accessible and equitable they want to make it. And to be honest, we want to see it things as 
as accessible and as equitable as humanly possible and also as inclusive as possible. So when Neuromaker designed this, cost came up and we said, well, we're not here for prescriptions. We're not here for renewal fees. Everything you see here is bundled together under one price point, but is going to be supported for the next five years. So Neuromaker hand in our programs cost $500 per hand. There's a two to one ratio. Same thing with the Neuromaker BCI as well. There's also the two to one ratio at the cost of $400. Now, since we did such a different approach on how we bring our curriculum, our programs, our courses into the schools, we simultaneously are there to ensure that you can leverage every single one of these pillars where it is needed. So we will have those conversations with you. We will talk about, hey, Josh, you know, we have our middle school that's been underperforming. What can we do here to, to, bring, to bring STEM into that building? And it cannot just be an after school option. There are as many studies and reports on after school and how after school is, is alienating within its own right to many of students. So what we love to do is, is really get to the root and, and understand the, the problems that are being faced locally. Because those problems that are being faced, those, those roadblocks that are being faced in access to, to the earlier point of this conversation have ripple effects. And those ripple effects are immense. But we can do this. We can change this. We have the ability here to create interdisciplinary, interdisciplinary learning that can provide students with the tools that they need to be successful in the careers that are here and emerging. So our mission and next step, engagement, 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 engagement. Let's, let's combat absenteeism. Let's take our students and get them back into the classroom, back into hands-on learning experiences by showing them what the future could be, be for them and mean for them. Let's have differentiated learning. Let's really understand how, you know, just by experience, you can't just experience computer science without talking about robotics or without talking about other concepts in engineering. It is all connected. Uh, we need to have these skill sets that can function within the tech world. We all need to be able to understand how these experiences that we provide are essential. They are essential experiences to grow our students and to develop their skill set. And of course, hands-on learning. You know, hands-on learning is, is such a vital, vital part of it. If you want to see your English scores go up, if you want to see your other math scores go up, hands-on learning is where you want to go. You want to be able to demonstrate to these students how to do something, why to do something, create it, develop it. You want to put those 21st century skills to the test. And then, of course, digital literacy. I stress and I stress it so much because computer science is, is also alienating. There is a massive societal impact uh, within artificial intelligence that we are going to discuss within our next webinar and how our curriculum combats this, talks about it, brings it to the forefront of discussion. Uh, because machine learning is here to stay, and we need to understand how biasy, biasy within our everyday lives uh, due to the systemic issues that we face impact our coding impact our solutions that we make because those solutions are not inclusive at all. So how do you make something that is truly inclusive and empowering to other to POC and underserved communities? So here's my call to action. This is this is where I want to pretty much talk to you and leave you with. And this is what I need you to do in the next 24 hours. What is your DEI STEM commitment? Have a hard look at your program. Have a hard look at your pathway and say, is this really being offered to everyone? Is this being offered to the students who really need this right now? Is it being taught within the schools that have a higher population of black and brown students? We all need to go into our community and we all need to ask ourselves these hard questions. 
because students that you feel who are disengaged, who are not really paying attention, you're not really, there's a bigger why behind that. These communities, CSC communities are being faced with challenges every single day that are connected to access, that are connected to systemically. It wasn't designed for them to be successful. And what I want you to ask is how do you create opportunity? And not only create opportunity, but foster innovation foster the willingness to take on this challenge. And if it's a lot to take on, I know it is. We at Merrimaker are here to help. We want to help you go to your admin, go to your superintendent, go to your leadership. Because if we don't act now, we may truly miss this chance, the opportunity to change the future of this country and to change this industry that I work in and I love and I see innovation in every day. Because uh, we need more innovators. We need more leaders. We need these skills within our profession, within our society. Because if we don't have it, we're going to lose it. And in that process, we're going to lose generations of, of really amazing people who simply weren't given a seat at the table. Because the question of giving them a seat never came up. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen, and I want to talk to you. I want to answer any questions you have along the way. And of course, email us. If this is something you want to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation, uh, let me go back to the very first screen here. My email is right there. Feel free to email me. Be filled if you want to have a discussion. Feel free to learn about how we develop our programs and courses and how we develop our curriculum to see them become truly equitable within, within our district and within our partners here. So thank you so much again for your time. Thank you so much for, for taking on this mission of, of DEI and STEM because we need leaders and we need our communities to work together. And in doing so, we can really create the future of innovation, one district at a time. Thank you so much. And I truly appreciate your time today.